Introduction Today, Ram and Vicky are sitting at the dining table and waiting for the dinner. Ram asked Vicky to pass the juice jar to him. But by mistake, Vicky hits some utensils and they fall down on the floor. Some of them were broken and some of them remain same. Then Vicky asked Ram, Why glass utensils are broken and steel utensils remain unaffected? Why is it so? Ram replied him that it is due to the properties of solids. Glass is brittle while steel is not. Each material has its own mechanical property. Students, I know you are much curious about this discussion. So, let's talk more about the mechanical properties of solids. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define solids Know about elastic body and plastic body Understand elastic behavior of solids Define stress and strain Define Hooke's law Analyze stress-strain curve Calculate elastic moduli. Calculate Poisson's ratio. Know the applications of elastic behavior of materials. Definition A solid is that state of matter in which its atoms and molecules are strongly bound so as to preserve their shape and volume. Solids can be classified into two classes. Number 1. Crystalline Solids These are the solids in which atoms or molecules are arranged in a regular pattern. Number 2. Amorphous Solids These are the solids in which atoms or molecules are arranged in an irregular pattern. These solids are also called glassy solids. Elastic body and plastic body A body that regains its original shape and size on the removal of deforming force within the elastic limit is called an elastic body. Elasticity is defined as the property of matter by virtue of which it regains its original shape and size after the removal of deforming force. A body that does not regain its original shape and size after the removal of deforming force is called a plastic body. Elastic behavior of solids In a solid, each atom is surrounded by neighboring atoms. When a solid is deformed, the atoms are displaced from their equilibrium positions causing a change in the interatomic distances. When the deforming force is removed, the interatomic forces tend to drive them back to their original positions. Thus, the body regains its original shape and size. Stress Stress is defined as the restoring force per unit area set up in the body when deformed by an external force. Stress is equal to restoring force upon area. SI unit of stress is Newton meter per square. Stress is of two types. Normal stress and tangential stress. Normal stress. It refers to the deforming force per unit area acting normal to the surface of the body. Normal stress is of two types. Tensile stress When there is increase in length of the body in the direction of the applied force. Compressive stress 
when there is a decrease in length of the body in the direction of the applied force. Tangential stress It refers to the deforming force acting per unit area tangential to the surface of the body. Strain Strain is defined as the ratio of the change in dimension of the body to the original dimension of the body. It has no unit and dimension. It is of three types. Longitudinal strain, volumetric strain and shearing strain. Longitudinal strain. It is defined as the ratio of the increase in length to the original length when a deforming force is applied. Longitudinal strain is equal to delta L by L. Volumetric strain. It is defined as the ratio of the change in volume of the original volume when a deforming force is applied. Volumetric strain is equal to minus delta V by V. Shearing strain. It is defined as the angle through which a line initially perpendicular to the fixed face gets turned on applying a tangential deforming force. Hooke's Law Hooke's Law states that within the limit of elasticity, stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress is equal to constant into strain. Constant is equal to stress upon strain. Here, this constant is called coefficient of elasticity. Hooke's law is an empirical law and is found to be valid for most materials. Stress-strain curve Consider a wire suspended vertically. When the wire is loaded, a stress is developed. On loading, the wire increases in length and thus strain is developed. From the curve, we note that when the strain is small, stress is proportional to strain. This is the region OP in which Hooke's law is obeyed. The point P is called the limit of proportionality. In region PE, stress is not proportional to strain, but the wire still regains its original length when load on the wire is removed. Thus, the point E is called the elastic limit. The region from O to E represents the elastic behavior of the material of the wire. In region EA, strain increases much more rapidly than stress. In this region, the wire does not regain its original length. Even when the stretching force is withdrawn, Beyond A, even a small increase in stress produces a very large increase in strain. Beyond point B, the strain keeps on increasing even if the stretching force is removed and the wire breaks at C. The region E to C shows the plastic behavior of the material of the wire. Elastic moduli the ratio of stress and strain is called modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity are of three types. Young's modulus, shear modulus and bulk modulus. Young modulus is defined as the ratio of normal stress to the longitudinal strain. It is represented by Y. Y is equal to normal stress upon longitudinal strain is equal to F into L divided by A into delta L where F is equal to external normal force. Delta L is equal to change in length. L is equal to original length. The ratio of shearing stress to the corresponding shearing strain is called the shear modulus of the material and is represented by G. G is equal to F by A into theta. It is observed that the shear modulus is generally less than Young's modulus. Bulk modulus is defined as the ratio of normal stress to the volumetric strain and is represented by K. K is equal to normal stress upon volumetric strain. K is equal to 
F upon A divided by negative delta V upon V. The reciprocal of the bulk modulus is known as compressibility. Example Let's take an example of elastic moduli. A rubber cube of side 7 cm has one side fixed with the tangential force equal to the weight of 200 kg is applied to the opposite face. Find the shearing strain produced and the distance through which the strained side moves. Given modulus of rigidity for rubber is 2 into 10 raised to the power 7 dyne per centimeter square. Let's see the solution. Given value R, L is equal to 7 cm and F is equal to 200 kg F. Converting the value of F into dynes, we get F is equal to 200 into 1000 into 981 dyne. Eta is given by 2 into 10 raised to the power 7 dyne per cm square. We know that area of the face of the cube A is equal to L square. Putting the values of L into above equation, we get A is equal to 7 into 7 cm square is equal to 49 cm square. We know that eta is equal to F upon A theta. By putting respective values, we can calculate the value of theta, which is equal to 0 0.2 radian. Shearing strain is given by delta L upon L. Delta L is equal to 7 into 0 0.2 centimeter. After calculation, we get the value of delta L is equal to 1.4 centimeter. Poison's ratio When we stretch a wire, it becomes longer but thinner. It means that the increase in length is always accompanied by a decrease in the cross section. The ratio of the lateral strain and the longitudinal strain is constant for a given material is known as the Poisson's ratio. V is equal to epsilon dash divided by epsilon. Here, V is the Poisson's ratio. Application of elastic behavior of materials some materials regain their original form long after the removal of the deforming force. This delay is called elastic after effect. Generally, suspension are made of quads whose elastic after effect is very small. The metallic parts of machines should not be subjected to stress beyond the elastic limit. Otherwise, they will be deformed. The railway track beam's cross section is I in shape. It gives an advantage of lightness and the flanges are able to withstand the compression and tension force due to loading. The thickness of the metallic rope needed to lift a given load is decided using the knowledge of elastic limit of the material, of the rope and the factor of safety. While using a material, it is ensured that the working stress is always larger than its breaking stress. The difference is the safety factor. Did you know? Maxwell was the first to define bulk modulus. According to recent studies, a class called semi-crystalline solid does exist. In this, both amorphous and crystalline phases coexist. Some polymers are in this category. For example, polyethylene. When a body is heated but not allowed to expand due to certain constraints, then internal forces are developed which give rise to stress known as thermal stress. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. A solid is that state of matter in which its atoms and molecules are strongly bound so as to preserve their shape and volume. Elasticity is defined as the property of matter by virtue of which it regains its original shape and size after the removal of deforming force. Stress is defined as the restoring force by unit area set up in the body when deformed by an external force. 
Strain is defined as the ratio of the change in dimension of the body to the original dimension of the body. Hooke's law states that within the limit of elasticity, stress is directly proportional to strain. Young's modulus is defined as the ratio of normal stress to the longitudinal strain. The ratio of shearing stress to the corresponding shearing strain is called the shear modulus of the material. Bulk modulus is defined as the ratio of normal stress to the volumetric strain. The ratio of the lateral strain and the longitudinal strain is constant for a given material is known as the Poisson's ratio.